Okay, we're going to, uh, if you've hope, hopefully already went over the intensity of sound and the relative, the absolute intensity of sound and the relative intensity of sound, and you kind of have a little bit idea how to do that, I want to make sure that you can get all the check mark problems done in your books that are going to be due here shortly. Um, so I'm just going to run through them real quick. Um, if you uh, remember um, in this first absolute intensity thing here, um, the intensity is the power over 4 pi r squared. So um, the power and the 4 pi aren't, aren't going to change. So we, we realize the intensity was always proportional to 1 over d squared, the distance away. So you could have inten one intensity times uh, that d, the distance from it squared would equal another intensity uh, times the distance out to that position squared. So we have an inverse square law, and that's how we can quickly uh, figure out some uh, some things. So 7.7 .7 says, if you move five times farther away from a sound source, what will happen to the loudness or the intensity of the sound? If you move five times farther away. Now it's really obvious that it's going to be softer, that the intensity is going to go down because we're moving farther away from it, so you're not going to hear it as well. Um, but the answer is not uh, one-fifth as much. You're moving five times farther away, and the inverse, it's an inverse square law. It's not just an inverse law. If it was proportional to one over displacement, yes. If you move five times farther away, it'd be one-fifth. But this is inverse square law, so it would actually be one-twenty-fifth. You'd hear one-twenty-fifth as much. Okay, um, that's 7.7. .7. Um, and then uh, we had the threshold of pain and the threshold of hearing. And uh, I'll just do this again for you if you didn't really remember this. Uh, the threshold of uh, um, hearing that we use in our equation uh, down here for IO um, is 1 uh, E negative 12 watts per meter squared. And 7.8 says, what would be the absolute intensity for the threshold of hearing in watts per centimeter squared? And sometimes... Uh, if the in, we're trying to figure out an intensity in watts per centimeter squared, then we have to use a different threshold of hearing there. So um, if you convert that, we have meter squared on the top and centimeter squared on the bottom, so the meter squared is a cancel. And in one square meter, how many square centimeters are there? Well, there are 100 centimeters in one meter, but these are square meters and square centimeters, so you'd have to square that. So if I took 1e negative 12 divided by 100, I'd be 1e negative 14. If I divide it by 100 again, I have 1e negative 16 watts per centimeter squared. So you might want to just memorize this. That might be what you're putting in for the IO if you're going to have everything be in watts per uh, centimeter squared. Okay. Uh, going on. 7.9. Okay, we got a lot of questions here. So 7.9, how many decibels is an intensity of 1 times 10 to the minus 5th watts per meter squared? Okay, so um, the way you figure out the decibels, it's always 10 times the log of a ratio. And the ratio is uh, your new intensity basically over your old intensity. And a lot of times the old intensity is going to be what we're comparing it to the threshold of hearing. But we don't have to be doing that. We can always figure out how many decibels you're increasing if you come from some original um, intensity up to a new intensity. You could, you could use it that way also. But this one is figuring out exactly how many decibels is there, so we're going to compare it to the threshold of hearing. So the first one, we would take 1 E negative 5, and we divide it by 1 E negative 12. And when you divide these, you subtract the exponent, so a minus 5 minus a minus 12, would be 1e7, 1e7, one e and we take the log of that, that's just the exponent, so the log of 1e7 would be 7, times 10 would be 70 decibels, that would be the first uh, problem. The next one would be 1e negative 7, now notice it's watts per centimeter squared, so you divide that by 1e negative 16, 1e negative 7 divided by 1e negative 16 would be 1e9, right? Minus 7 minus a minus 16 would be a 9. 1e9, what's the log of 1e9? Well, it's 9. 9 times 10 is 90 decibels. So those would be the, first, those would be the two answers for uh, 7.9. Okay, um, what about 7.10? What does 40 decibels mean? So when we have a decibels, 
like this, we can just say, and it's a nice uh, number of 10, this means four zeros, four zeros. So it means 10,000 times greater than the threshold of hearing. That's what it means, 10,000 times greater than the threshold of hearing. Okay, what if I did have some uh, like decibels, like I had uh, 33 decibels. I'm going to add a problem in here, sorry. 33 decibels. Uh, what would be the absolute intensity of that? Well, um, you know, your equation for decibels is 10 times the log of I over IO. So I have 33 in for the decibels. I have to work that backwards. The first thing I would do is I divide it by 10, and I get 3.3 or 3.3, sorry. And then um, I would have to get the inverse log, so you do 10 to the 3.3 power, and you'd get an, uh, some answer. And then that answer, you would take times IO, and you'd have your intensity, okay? So you take your decibels, divide by 10, you divide by 10, and then you take the inverse log, which means take the 10 to the 3.3 power, and then you take that times the intense threshold of hearing and you have your intensity. All right, good enough. You've probably already figured out how to do that anyway. Uh, doubling the absolute intensity corresponds to about how many decibels? How many decibels change with doubling an absolute intensity? Okay, so if we think about this, decibels equals 10 times log of a ratio. Okay, the ratio is the new intensity over the old intensity is really what that means. That ratio could be the, old, the new intensity over the old intensity. It doesn't always have to be the threshold of hearing down here. We don't have to always be comparing it to the threshold of hearing. So this says you're doubling the absolute intensity, which means this I would be twice whatever this I is. So really, all I, have to, all I can do is I can put in a 2 in for that ratio, right? The I is twice the IO, so 2 in for there. So what is the log of 2? Well, it's basically 0.3, and then I take that times 10, and I get uh, basically three decibels. So every time you double the absolute intensity, you're really going up by three decibels, approximately three decibels every time you double the intensity. Okay, uh, question 7.12. If you move five times farther away from a sound source, what is the decibel change? What is the decibel change? Now, we already did this problem earlier that we know that we're going to uh, have an absolute intensity of 1 25th, whatever it originally was. So the, the new intensity will be 1 25th, whatever uh, the other, the original one was. So the original one is going to be, you know, 25 times bigger. So in for this ratio, we could actually put 1 over 25. And then we still do log of that times 10. Okay? So if you take 1 over 25, take the log of it, and we take that times uh, 10, then um, basically what you get is a, a negative 14 decibels. Okay, And what that means is, is that if you move 5 times farther away from a sound source, the intensity is going to go down. So it's actually going to drop by 14 decibel change. You know, there's... You, you can't have a negative 14 decibels. You know, the scale, decibel scale only goes down to zero. Okay, so a negative 14 decibel means we're going to drop by 14 decibels. So if you had a decibel reading of, you know, like 25 decibels, then that means if you move five times farther away, it was going to go down to like 11 decibels. Okay, it'd be 14 decibels less. All right. Um, last problem, 713. If you hear a sound of 89.5 decibels at 3 miles away and then move to 13 miles away, how many decibels would you hear? Now, if looking at common sense here, you're moving farther away. So you're going to have a drop of decibels. You're going to hear less intense. So let's look at absolute intensity. Remember, I could do 3 miles away squared, right? I could have, I could do this. I could do, um, I, let's, let's, Let's let's uh, let's change that. Let's do this. I I remember I have I D one squared would equal a new intensity. So this is my original. We'll say times D one squared would equal the new intensity times D two squared. So I don't know what the I O is. I'll just do I O, but that'll be uh, three uh, squared 
would equal my new intensity times uh, 13 squared, okay? And if I do my, uh, if I solve for I over IO, right, I over IO, that would actually equal, um, I'm going to take the I over here, I'm going to take the 13 squared under here, so that would be 3 squared over 13 squared right there, okay? So I could do 3 squared divided by 13 squared, and I get a number, and that's actually my ratio, right? So, and remember, 10 log of that ratio, I over IO, okay? So really what I could do is I could do 10 times the log of that ratio would be uh, 3 over 13, that whole thing squared. So if I do 3 divided by 13, square it, then I take the log of that, and I take that times 10, that would end up with a negative 12.7 decibels, which means I'm going to drop 12.7 uh, decibels if I move that uh, 10 miles, 10 miles away. Okay. So if I take uh, 89.5, 89.5 minus 12.7 decibels, um, I should have a new intensity of 76.8 decibels. Um, at that, uh, that's how much I should hear at that new location. I should drop 12.7 decibels. That'll end all the problems there up through page 80 in your book. And so you'll have all that ready to go.